What up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Square Circle Podcast. I'm your host, Marie Shadows, and I am continuing my G1 Climax 32 coverage for night six that happened on July 26, 2022. As always, if you enjoy this review episode, please make sure to like, comment, and share with others. Sharing is caring, and definitely let the world know that I cover professional wrestling, I cover New Japan Pro Wrestling, and I just love talking about wrestling. So let a friend know, let them know that they can sign up for free at marieshadows.substack.com, where you could definitely get all of your wrestling needs and fixes directly to your inbox every single day at 10 a.m. If you would like to become a paid patron of my Substack newsletter, which is called Square Circle Info, all you have to do is head over to marieshadows.substack.com forward slash G132 because I'm still running my sale for the G1 from the start of it, which was July 16th all the way to the end, which is going to be August 18th ish because of finos you have enough time to become a paid subscriber to unlock all the goodies that i offer behind a paywall because covering professional wrestling is not cheap and it's a lot of work and time and effort and i give you guys original content with original thoughts original writings everything original nothing copy and paste and try to bring you the best of the best that i can do by myself so you can always sign up for free and then you could always upgrade to a paid subscription. Upgrading to a paid subscription helps out the brand, helps me out, helps me to do more things that I want to do with the shows and traveling and giving you guys vlogs and having you on this journey with me in my wrestling career. Again, signing up is free. MarieShadows.substack.com is where you'll be able to hear this podcast episode, plus more podcast episodes, plus my wrestler interviews with New Japan Pro Wrestlers, Clark Connors and Aaron Hanari of the United Empire. So if that sounds like fun or interesting to you, head over to MarieShadows.substack.com, sign up for free. Definitely watch the previews that is given to you for those interviews if you feel like my work deserves a little bit more extra a little bit more love by all means become a paid subscriber i'm always giving out discounts so take advantage of it while you can this episode is dedicated to going over the g1 climax 32 so let's jump right into it our first match for the g1 climax 32 night six is B Block, the Great Okan, representing United Empire, taking on Chase Owens, representing Bullet Club. We really need to talk about this match because I just don't understand New Japan's consistency sometimes, especially when it comes to story. So hear me out. In the world of professional wrestling, there's kayfabe. So this whole story and me ranting a little bit is going to be all in kayfabe because I need to try to understand something. The way that this match starts is that Chase goes and blindsides the Great Khan with powder. He throws powder in his eyes. The bell has not rung yet, but it eventually does ring in between the time of Chase throwing the powder and trying to get the one up on the Great Khan. And Chase goes for a pin, which is unsuccessful, right? I just want to know, where was this sense of urgency when he was facing Tama not too long ago. For someone that was Bullet Club buddies with Tama for a while, and yes, I did cover and I did say that Chase was still angry at the fact that Tama did kick him out of the Bullet Club at one point to go with the Elite some years ago in 2017. But then welcome him back because he realized that was a mistake and that was an accident and that should have been buried because Tama is a stand up guy. Now that Tama is no longer in Bullet Club, 
This Chase Owens that we see at the beginning of the Great Ocon versus Chase Owens for B block should have been the same Chase should have been the same Owens that was facing Tama. But when Owens was facing Tama, that match was watered down. And then this one felt very different. And I'm not sure if it's because in this match, they were at Kirk and Hall. And then the other one, they weren't really in near the cities where the Japanese fans don't really understand complexity matches as such. There was just a huge disconnect. How do you have a watered down match with Tama, which you know he can go at any second? And you also can go too because you were trained by really good guys, really good wrestlers in the business. To have a really good, interesting match with the Great Okan and act like the Great Okan has been your enemy for years when the Great Okan just got to New Japan Pro Wrestling. My point is, is that Chase Owens has a lot more history with Tama and he should be a lot more angry with Tama, especially if he still feels or felt some type of way when Tama kicked him out. For all the years that Tama has been in Bullet Club before getting kicked out by Jay White, any type of frustrations that chase has against tama should be right at the forefront rather than feeling like those frustrations are with the great Ocon, which doesn't make sense there should be a consistency of storylines here especially if you're dealing with a huge storyline with bullet club and maybe trying to have like another civil war in bullet club but things just don't make sense like i noticed that Chase has this violence, this intensity about his character when he's going against Shingo, when he's going against the Great Okan, when he's going against other wrestlers other than Tama. And that just doesn't make sense to me, especially in the world of Kefe, when you're supposed to be really angry at somebody and all these frustrations come to the surface. And every time you see the person, you're like, I'm going to kick your ass. I don't get that dynamic. I don't get that dynamic between Chase and Tama, even though the real story in Bullet Club is Tama versus Jay because of the betrayal. But this is where you could get a little creative with the other members of Bullet Club, because now there are sub stories that other people could be like, yeah, I was frustrated with Tama when this happened, when he stopped me from doing this, when I couldn't do that, when Tama wasn't on my side for this or anything like that. You have sub stories to play with. This is why the Bullet Club story is so important and so big. But New Japan is keeping it very, very simple, keeping it very under wraps what it feels like because they haven't really been focusing on it and the g1 is where this should be focused on night six i'm gonna jump a little bit but night six had david finley versus juice robinson and that was the match of the night their story is what bullet club story should be which i'll get to a little bit later on in this podcast episode but going back to the great Ocon and chase owens i don't understand why chase is so aggressively attacking the great Ocon as if they've been feuding for years even though the great Ocon is extremely new to new japan and the new japan crowd that's the only thing that i don't understand in this whole dynamic you have a world-class athlete like tama and you have a watered down match with him but then when it comes to the great Ocon, you have something that's really nice to watch, really nice to break down, really nice to dissect and try to have the fans understand the differences between the great Ocon and Chase Owens and what they do on a psychological level, what they do on a physical level and just have fun breaking it down. So as I mentioned, Chase throws the powder in the great Ocon's face, tries to go for that pin, but the great Ocon kicks out. We get a back rake from Chase to the Great Ocon and Chase does a Northern Light suplex. 
he does not normally do this again i don't know why he did not pull out these moves when he was fighting tama the great okan kicks out at the great okan kicks out of a tempted pin we get a neck breaker to the great okan by chase chase goes for a quick cover the great okan kicks out at this point chase really wants this match to be over so he could get two points and not have to worry about anything else and embarrass the great Ocon because in their feud of wins and losses, Chase is ahead of the great Ocon. We got some closed fists, but the referee tells him to open it up. Chase Owens starts working on the great Ocon's ankle. The great Ocon manages to do a snap suplex to Chase, followed by some Mongolian chops and a baseball dropkick to Chase in the tree of woe. The Great Okan is definitely a fighter. We get a slingshot double knees to the Great Okan by Chase. Some lariats. Goes for a cover. Okan kicks out. Okan then avoids the baseball drop kick to the outside and decides to smash Chase's face into the apron multiple times and does like a slam dunk choke slam to Chase. Rose Chase back into the ring. Goes for a cover. Chase kicks out. We get a roll up with Chase trying to use his feet on the ropes, but that does not work. Chase Owens has now been using a sunset flip into the corner pad, which is nice to see. It's something different in his arsenal. The Great Ocon blocks the sea trigger with the claw. Chase gets a hold of it, but the Great Ocon is very quick to do a backbreaker with the claw. TTD on Chase by the Great Okan. TDD is a Master Waddle move. Chase Owens gets a little bit dangerous here by snapping the Great Okan's neck over the rope by pulling down his arms. We get a C trigger, a package power driver to the Great Okan, and Chase goes for the pin. One, two, three, and Chase Owens picks up two points for the G1 Climax 32 and gains another victory over the Great Okan. So this was a very fun match. A very interesting match and a dynamic between Chase Owens and the Great Okan. Again, I don't understand why this type of aggressiveness is not used towards Tama. Since in kayfabe, Chase still did not like the fact that he got kicked out of Bullet Club that one time, but then brought back. Like, if that is how you feel, keep that same energy, the same way that you have that aggressiveness towards the Great Okan, towards Shingo, towards Tanahashi, towards anyone else. Keep that same energy with Tama because there is a beautiful story there to tell and people will be wanting to know more about it people will be asking questions people will be watching that story unfold and plus it's a chance to prove all of the haters wrong it's a chance to show people that chase owens doesn't just do lazy things that chase owens can definitely go with the best of the best in new japan pro wrestling it's sort of a little bit weird that now recently in 2022 that he ended up getting a tag team title i'm not counting the king of pro wrestling trophy i'm not counting that but he managed to get tag team championship gold with Fale, and he's been there for six or seven years and only now they're pushing him he could have been a really bigger star in bullet club if he put the work in and actually wanted to make himself known but he does this when jay white steps into power he does this when jay white declares himself the leader this is why in theory i really do think that chase owens is riding the coattails of people in bullet club but yet then tama gets kicked out makes no sense so you guys could think about that one. If you have any comments, you definitely can leave them down below in the post when this gets posted. Our second match is C-Block. Kenta versus Evil. 
again, Bullet Club versus Bullet Club slash House of Torture. And I will say this again. At the end of the G1 Climax 32, House of Torture better be kicked out of Bullet Club because they don't need it. They don't need Bullet Club. House of Torture got their own merchandise line. House of Torture is known as House of Torture in association with Bullet Club. There's no reason why House of Torture, which is evil, usual, show, and Dick Togo to be there. Makes no sense. And by the way, Kenta has a book out. It's an autobiography. It is only written in Japanese. I do not know if they are going to be having an English version of it. If they do, I would definitely grab one and read it. So this match starts off with some shenanigans because what House of Torture match doesn't have shenanigans, right? Evil extends his hand. He wants a handshake. Kenta reluctantly shakes Evil's hand and Evil pulls Kenta into his finisher. Kenta avoids, gets upset and yells at all of them and even tells the referee like, did you see that? Then Kenta throws up the two sweet, but instead of allowing Evil to two sweet him back, Kenta pokes him in the eye. Evil and Dick Togo get upset at Kenta. This is only fair play. After that, we see Kenta getting his book and showing it to Evil in the House of Torture. And Evil just takes the book and disrespects it. And Kenta manages to grab the book that's now on the canvas and decides to hit evil over the head with the book abe also gets crashed into his table falls over kenta uses the hammer that's used for the ring bell on evil kenta goes back first into the exposed steel kenta kicks the ref because evil swings kenta's leg into the ref and then we have a double team magic killer from dick togo and evil onto kenta Evil thinks that he's going to pick up the victory over Kenta right here, but that's not the case. We get another ref bump in this match and then a DDT to Evil. We get a collision, a roll up, but Evil kicks out. We get an inside cradle, Evil kicks out. Kenta then applies game over. However, lights go out. When the lights go back on, we can see Evil choking out Kenta with a t-shirt. Kenta and Evil then start fighting with chairs as if like they're baseball bats. Because if you followed Evil's career for a long time, you know that he's a baseball fan. However, things don't go as planned. So after the chair fighting, Kenta finds himself on the outside and so does Evil. The referee begins to count and Dick Togo holds Kenta's leg. So that way... Evil can get three via count out, which is so anticlimactic in this G1 tournament. So Evil gets his next two points via count out. Our next match is A Block, Tom Lawler versus Lance Archer. This was a pretty good match between the two. Tom Lawler is definitely finding a very good footing in New Japan. And he's definitely holding his own against certain wrestlers. This one, we saw some forearm exchanges, some knees by Lance Archer, the pounce by Archer. And he sent Lawler into the guardrail, back body drop on the apron, multiple splashes. Lawler tries to come back with some jabs to Lance Archer, but Archer is in control. The size difference, the speed, the power is different. Tom Lawler has to change up his mindset on how to approach taking on Lance Archer. We get a release overhead suplex to Tom Lawler. A drop kick to the knee is what sends this into a little bit of Tom Lawler having an advantage. Lawler comes in with a front choke armbar on Archer. Followed up with some elbows, but that doesn't phase Archer at all. Archer comes in with a big boot to Lawler. However, Lawler tries for an armbar, finally breaks the grip, gets the armbar, and also gets a near fall. Lawler then goes for a front choke. However, Lance Archer gets himself a rope break. Tom Lawler is right back on the attack. He goes for the cavat and adds some knees right to Lance Archer's head. We get a right hand, then a choke slam to Lawler onto Royce Isaacs. 
Black Hole Slam, Lawler kicks out at two. Now Lawler is able to slam Archer, which is astonishing and amazing at the same time. We get a rear naked choke on Archer and then an electric chair. And then Archer follows that up with some jabs and then the blackout on Tom Lawler. Lance Archer picks up the victory over Tom Lawler and gets another two points in the G1 Climax 32. Our main event for night six of the G1 Climax 32 is D-Block, David Finley versus Juice Robinson. This was an amazing main event. It had a lot of emotion, feeling, moments, and you can tell that something went awry. Back on April 16th, 2022, we had Windy City Riot in Chicago. This was a New Japan Pro Wrestling pay-per-view where it had multiple stars of New Japan Pro Wrestling. We had David Finley, Juice Robinson, and Brody King teaming up to take on Jonah, Shane Hayes, and Bad Dude Tito in a street fight. Leading up to this, Juice Robinson will do an interview and he mentioned how he is completely burnt out. He doesn't want to do wrestling anymore. He's going to be stepping away from New Japan Pro Wrestling and to focus on other things. Everyone in the wrestling community, including myself, bought into this. We understood it and we wished him the best. Like, I honestly thought he was going to take a vacation because he's been wrestling for so long and he's been with New Japan Pro Wrestling for so long. So I thought that this was the appropriate time for him just to take a vacation, recharge and like do some other things with his life. However, that's not the case. So at the end of this six man tag street fight at Windy City Riot in Chicago on April 16th, 2022, Juice Robinson hugs David Finley as if this is going to be the last time that we see these two together in the ring and see Juice last time in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Nope, because Juice comes out at Dominion, which happened on May 2022. And we got introduced to a new Juice Robinson. He decided to join Bullet Club and now he's rock hard Juice Robinson. Before all of this, he was the tag team partner to David Finley. So this match of Juice Robinson versus David Finley is everything. It's amazing storytelling. It's what happens when one thinks that they're better than the other tag team partner, but they have to write it out and just deal with it as a tag team. And I will say this, though, that their tag team run should have been more exposed, should have been more displayed, and people talking about them. Because I barely remember their tag team run. They have been multiple tag team champions in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and Juice Robinson has managed to get the IWGP United States Championship title. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But they were a tag team. They broke up. It looked like a mutual breakup. But this main event tells a different story. This main event tells the story of a young, hungry David Finley. Because he is correct. Even though we are on night six, I do keep up with the rest of the nights just through the grapevine. And I'll say this, that the whole entire tournament... Whenever David Finley is in a tournament, no one expects him. And in every single one of his backstage comments, he reminds the fans and the viewers to expect him. And we are expecting him in this G1 Climax 32. Now, this is a new David Finley. We have a new Juice Robinson. I said it before that Juice Robinson is the wild card in this G1 tournament. But it looks like now David Finley has become the second wild card and someone to expect. Because I think for the longest, there's been this ceiling on David Finley. And now that he's in the G1 and having these amazing matches with the veterans and his friends that he grew up in the dojo system with and the New Japan system with, 
that now we're seeing a different side to David Finley. David Finley has all the gifts in the world of being a professional wrestler. He's fourth generation in this business. And the fact that his name is not talked about enough and not really having a deep dive of his career is somewhat hurting him while others are at the forefront, the spotlight, so to speak, of where we always talk about them. And it really comes down to a matter of how you use social media. There are wrestlers that use social media like it's second nature to them and they get a lot of content out there and they're able to put themselves out there versus others that don't really put themselves out there as much or try to grow a community so that people know to spread the word and talk about them and put them over and stuff. So it's a matter of how you deal with social media and how you interact with fans. I won't go into too much detail in the match like I usually do with telling you hold for hold and all this stuff, but I will say some highlights. So in the very beginning of this match, for the first half of this match, Juice Robinson is in control. Juice Robinson knows David Finley very, very well. Like I said, they were tag team partners and they've been through hell and high water. They even went through the dojo system together. It is well documented that David Finley has had two shoulder surgeries and one of his shoulders, his left shoulder, I believe, is never really going to fully recover to the standards of a normal shoulder when you're not a wrestler. So Juice Robinson knows about this. Everyone knows about this. Juice Robinson takes advantage of that left shoulder, trying to re-damage it trying to have David Finley out of the G1 indefinitely and go back to getting another surgery. Juice Robinson works on David Finley's arm for a good while, and David Finley has this never-give-up attitude, this tough attitude, and he toughs it out, and he does find some openings and advantages towards Juice Robinson. The moment that he does, he takes advantage of Juice Robinson's hand that has been previously broken and is currently taped up. And then David Finley attacks Juice Robinson's hand viciously and makes sure that Juice Robinson knows exactly the same pain that David Finley is feeling. So back and forth, they are definitely hurting each other's limbs. And sometimes during this match, Juice Robinson actually does try to use the IWGP United States Championship title, the same one that Will Ospreay is champion of and won the belt, but hasn't taken it back from Juice yet. So Juice Robinson tries to use the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship title against Finley. However, Finley has the shillelagh and hits the belt, and Juice Robinson drops the belt. And Finley then picks up Juice Robinson, does the trash bandit, and goes over for the cover, gets the one, two, three, and David Finley gets his two points in the G1 Climax 32 for night six. Which, by the way, is crazy. They had David Finley get the win over Juice Robinson. I thought Juice was going to win only because they were going to go with the storyline that it's rock hard Juice Robinson. He's part of Bullet Club. And he's making a name for himself and definitely getting himself over with all of his wild antics and tactics and everything like that. This match is a must see match. And if you want to watch it, I usually do watch alongs on twitch.tv forward slash Marie underscore shadows. So if you ever want to, the invite is there. This match was damn good for night six. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this review of night six of the G1 Climax 32. I know that I am very, 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 very far behind. We're almost at the end of the G1, but don't worry. I promise myself that this mini project will be finished and it will be done. And I'm going to get back on the grind to take more notes, give you more podcast episodes and all the podcast episodes going forward will be free to listen If you feel like I do a wonderful job with analysis and bringing you stories and breaking everything down and just admire the hard work that I do behind the scenes because I do not have a team. 
I do not have any wrestling news sites backing me up with my passion for doing this for you guys and my loyal readers and listeners. You guys are my everything. You guys are my family, my friends, my fans. You guys are there since day one. If you're just coming in, I am Marie Shadows of the Square Circle Podcast, host, creator, and everything beyond. And if you feel like I deserve some type of financial support, by all means, there are many, many, many ways to send that over. You could do donations through twitch.tv forward slash Marie underscore shadows whenever I am live. I am a Twitch affiliate. If you want to get access to this and all my writings, head over to marieshadows.substack.com where I always give out some type of discount, some type of code. I am currently running a G1 sale, which gets you 28% off of the whole entire G1 run. And I'm also running a two day free trial if you guys want to check that out. So marieshadows.substack.com is where you could also support. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Marie underscore shadows to get updates about when I'm going to go live on Twitch, new reads, new listens, new everything. I love professional wrestling. It is my passion. It is my it is my everything. It really is. I love this business for what it is. And I love covering it. And I love that you guys get to hear my thoughts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to an episode of the Square Circle podcast. I am your host, Marie Shadows. And this has been a review of the G1 Climax 32, night six. And I'll see you guys on the next one.